Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is episode number, oh, goodness gracious, I've forgotten, 20, uh, 80, 82, I think, <coughs> 82 of your next level mastermind. And our topic for today is called Best Business Story You've Heard. And I've got a cracker for you. You really, this is really is a funny story, okay? And it's true, and it's based on my grandma, okay? So for those who are watching the replay, Please make sure you reach out to all these people here. They're going to have their links underneath the video, which means everybody, you've got to put your link in the chat, okay? And I want everybody who's watching this to reach out to all of these people. They share their time, their expertise, their knowledge, and more importantly, they're sharing their value with you. And it doesn't matter what they do because they come from a variety of backgrounds. You don't know who they know. So I'm encouraging everybody here to reach out to each and every one of these people whose links will be available to you and connect with them, talk with them, get to get to know them, okay? Because goodness gracious, you never know where that's going to get you, all right? That's my strongest advice to people who are watching this replay. And it's also my strongest advice to people who are here now, reach out to each other in the group and also here. So without any further ado, Minal, because you have to leave us in the near future, how about you share a few minutes about what you do, the problems you serve for people and whatever, and where you are, etc. Over to you. Thanks so much, Peter, and, and everybody else. It's great to be here today. So um, my name is Manal, and I'm from Hong Kong. I was born and raised here and educated in the UK. Um, I am a counsellor. I have my own private practice where I provide training, um, consultation, and uh, counselling to individuals who are struggling with their mental health. I also founded a charity in 2018 in Hong Kong, um, and it's primarily as well to raise awareness um, of the, for those who are struggling with depression, anxiety, and obsessive compulsive disorder, because it's still very, very taboo in Asia and across the world. And so I'm really trying to change the narrative around that so people feel more comfortable to talk about not being okay. Because um, we're all human, we all have our ups and downs, and um, it's okay to express how we feel and what we're going through. Um, so, yeah, that's that's me. As in in our charity, in the charity that I run, we have a few main objectives. One is to um, provide support so people who cannot afford or access therapy come to support group um, meetings, and they talk about what they're going through and get supported by peers who are going through like similar situations to them. And I think that's very, very powerful because peer support is really incredible and very valuable. Um, something which this, this group has in its own way as well. Um, we also try to go out to disadvantaged communities and educate them about uh, mental health related topics. And we provide resources um, that are available in Hong Kong and across the city. So that's that's me. Thank you, Minal. There's one thing on the charity aspect of it is that it's not online. That that is face to face, right? Yeah. So the it it's face to face. What I've been having quite a challenge. I think we all have been with COVID. So all mm. the support group meetings and the <sighs> counselling used to take place face to face in an office building but the last three years or last two and a half years mm. we've moved to a more virtual setting um and i feel that's really in some ways helped some i mean those who have um issues with maybe agoraphobia and panic attacks they prefer being at home um and it's easier to kind of see the setting of those who struggle with obsessive compulsive disorder can see what they're talking about or where they're stuck but with mm -hmm. others, um, getting out of the house is is so important, and it's it's hard to read people's body language um, and see how they really are, and and to gauge them if they're not face to face. Yeah, point taken. Thank you, thank you very much, Manal, and and congratulations on the work that you do because 
it's in great demand. We live in a world of uncertainty and skepticism and a whole lot of things. And people, people are under a huge amount of challenge right now. So it's people like you, Manal, who can make a huge difference to people. So I congratulate you for the work that you're doing. And please make, sure, please make sure your links are there for people to reach out to you, okay? Thank you so much. And next time, stay longer than 15 minutes. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll start thinking bad things. <laughs> I'm joking, by the way. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Manal. All right. Yvonne, Yvonne Jones, you're next, followed by John Allen. Hello everyone, I am Yvonne A. Jones of 50andwisercoaching.com and what I do, Peter, I'm looking for your, your prompt, but yeah. I don't see that today. No, I'm not anyway. using it today. In fact, I decided not to use it because I had trouble making the clock work. <laughs> okay, I'll continue. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Yvonne Jones of 50andwisercoaching.com and the 50 and Wiser, the founder of the 50 and Wiser community on Facebook. And what I do, I work with, I specialize in working with mature female on, online entrepreneurs who want to grow a sustainable, lucrative and enjoyable business from wherever they are in the world. Three of the biggest problems or challenges that they have, because I am one of them, so I totally understand. It's one, maintaining, sustaining that courage and confidence <laughs> that they have worth and bring and can bring value regardless of age, whether in your 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever. They also have an issue with building strong relationships and creating memorable experiences so that they're able to market less and be able to retain more of their clients and their customers. I am Yvonne A. Jones. My mantra is focus on relationships and the money will follow. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Yvonne. And I was waiting for that mantra because <laughs> it's so darn true. Thank you very much. And just for those who are watching, um, we had a talk during the week, Yvonne and I, <clears throat> And, I, I, and I'm going to say the name publicly because I, I just can't believe this. But there's a, there's a thing in the United States, a big company called Home Depot. You, you, you're all familiar with that, right? Well, their customer service is unbelievable. I mean, I don't really, this is going to go on YouTube. And so Home Depot, if you're watching this, for goodness sake, get your act into gear because you are treating your customers as if they did not exist, right? And it's incredible how people can get away with that. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that publicly. And if they want to come out to Thailand and kick me in the butt, they can do it. I don't care. All right. Thank you, Yvonne. John Allen, followed by Pat Dreyer. Hi, everyone. I'm John D. Allen, Allen Small Business Coaching. <clears throat> I specialize in helping small business owners with three of their biggest challenges. One is attracting and convert, or, and one and two are attracting and converting their ideal prospects into cut into paying customers or clients, allowing them to fill any of their short-term cash flow gaps while leading to their long-term financial goals. And today I'm looking for small business owners that just want to chat. You know, I don't know whether I can help them or not and to see what their problems are and to see whether we can work out a a solution or not. So if you know somebody that's looking for that, be glad to help you out. I'm located in southwestern Ontario, close to the other London, the one without the big bridge and the clock. And again, looking for small business owners that want to talk. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, John. And I had it. I can't remember the name now, but I had a person reach out to me and connect with me who's also from London and Ontario. I better make sure I put you two together. Okay. <clears throat> because she was a really lovely person to talk to. All right, thanks. Pat, Pat Dreyer, followed by Brenda. Hi everybody, I'm Pat Dreyer and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona in the US. And I'm in network marketing with My Daily Choice. And I help people who wanna make money like right now. And in today's environment, there's so many people that are stuck and uncertain about their future. And 
the global economy, inflation, we all have at least one thing in common. We all have less and everything costs more. So when I find people who want to make money, I show them how to make money. Anybody can do it by following a proven documented system. And it's so simple, I can actually write it out on a napkin for you. Now, unfortunately, most people won't even participate in their own rescue. They let their ego get in the way. They overthink and complicate everything. They want to put their own twist on things. And they have one excuse after another, and it absolutely holds them back. So if you're motivated and you're willing to unlearn what you know about making money, money right now and learn a new way we can show you the simple steps to success just reach out and i'll show you everything thank you peter thank you very much pat thank you very much indeed brenda brenda lovely to see you again thank you very much for joining us and following brenda we will have joy okay brenda over to you You're muted, Brenda. Thank you very much, Peter, and I'm happy to be back. I'm having a challenge with the mute button this week. <laughs> I am Brenda Marie Sheldrick. I'm your biz leads expert from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. And I'm helping. Have you ever had a moment in your business career where you've thought about just throwing in the towel, just giving it all up? I, I just saw Jessica put her hand up and I know that I have, I know that I've had those times and there've been some of the wonderful people in this room who've helped me to keep going. But, and that's why I started a series of master classes where we help you to solve those challenges. We have experts every week. We have a different expert I'm doing 52 of these one a week to help you to solve the challenges that you're facing in your business. Thank you, Brenda. Have you finished that? Yep, that's, you know, that's what I'm doing. Anything else you'd like to add to that? Because you've got time. Oh, well, if um, the, the master classes take place every Monday and they're done through Zoom, and if you are an expert, if you have a solution for an entrepreneur challenge, then I would love to talk to you about hosting a masterclass, doing a masterclass with me. And if you are a person who has faced one of those challenges, don't give up. You want to keep making your dreams come true. Don't go back to that job making someone else's dreams come true. Thank you, Brenda. And I'm glad you added that because because I want people to reach out to Brenda because she does a really good job. Thank you very much, Brenda, very much. Okay, Joy. Followed Hello, by, followed by, who have I got? Ashford, I knew, oh, goodness Christ, I nearly forgot you, Ashford, my goodness Christ. Okay, Joy followed by Ashford. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Joy Healy from Norwich in the United Kingdom. I help baby boomers who didn't plan for a comfortable retirement <coughs> income, so are interested in making an extra income online, full-time or part-time. The three problems that people wanting to start a business for their retirement face are lack of technical expertise, lack of time and lack of money. I can help solve these three key problems for many with the training that I'm following that aims to turn failed opportunity seekers into fully trained affiliate marketers. You, you can learn more about my offers at the link in, my, uh, in the chat. Uh, this week, I'm looking for baby boomers who will make helpful contributions to my new Facebook group uh, for people looking to fund a com comfortable retirement. Contributing members can have a business promotion once a week. And again, I'll put the uh, I'll put the link in the chat. Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much, Joy. Okay, Ashwin, followed by Andrew. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody is well. Before I start into what I'm offering, I want to 
give a thanks to my customers and to all of our customers. I'm going to read this thing to you. My customer is my best friend. My customer does not depend on us. We depend on them. My customer is not separate from us. My customer is part of us. Answering the needs of my customer is an opportunity to give thanks for my customer's support. So I thought I read that to remind me of, uh, of the relationship we all have with our customer. And actually today what I can help is I ask these questions. Has every one of your clients returned to your business since end of the pandemic? If not, then we can help you. To find out under no obligation, call 416-722-7772 or email me at abshinnuhi at gmail.com. And here we have a guarantee also. The guarantee is that if after a month you are not completely happy with our services, then our services are free until you are happy. Thank you, Peter. That's all. That's an incredible offer, yeah? Okay? If, you, if your customers aren't happy, it's free until they are happy. Yes. Did yes. I get that right? Yes. Yes. Wow. Does that work? It does work uh, for, the, for the advertising, like Google AdWords and those things. They pay for that. But our service itself is free until they're happy if they were not happy initially. What an incredible we, we offer. Sure I've never heard anything as good as that. Yeah. I'm trying to think, how can I do that? I wonder if I can try, try and do something like that. That sounds good. Thank you very much, Ashvin. Thank you very much. Make sure, please make sure your links are in the chat. So people can connect with you. Thank you very much. Andrew, Andrew Kavanagh, welcome to your very first little mastermind with us. It's delighted to have you here and you joined the group today and he's at his first mastermind. And I just want to say welcome. Please make yourself feel at home. People here, I'd like you all to reach out to, to him, uh, to Andrew, both in the group, because he's actually done a little story about himself in there. Please make sure you're making people at home and also connect with him and make him feel welcome. All right. So with that done, Andrew, over to you, my man. Share with Thank us you. a little bit about what you're all about and what you can help people with. Thank you so much, Peter. Um, love it to be here. Love it to uh, to meet the you know, and see the enthusiasm of everybody uh, on the Zoom here right now. My name's Andrew Kavner. Um, I have been in various businesses over the last uh, three or more decades. Most recent one was we ran a school photography business, uh, school photos, I think they call it in the, in the States and Canada, uh, photo day, school photo day, uh, or picture day, you would call it. Um, very, very good business, very lucrative business. Um, we made, uh, my wife and I made a decision uh, last year that, uh, we were not going to get the jab and that caused an enormous amount of trouble because to go into schools in Australia, you needed to have that qualification. So we sold the business. Um, it wasn't a fire sale, but it was sold for less than we had planned. And we are now transforming ourselves. My wife's starting a wellness business. Um, and I am doing what I love doing, and that is helping other business owners to be the very best they can. Um, I've been doing that with school photographers for the last five or six years, but I am now excluded from that industry. I have a non-compete clause, so I'm not allowed to talk to people in that industry. So uh, it's a case now of saying, well, I'm really starting from scratch to build my client base. My target, my avatar is probably 50, maybe 40 plus years of age, most likely male, um, been in business for most of their life for themselves, but they are not in a position that they had planned to be in when they first started. They thought they were going to be building the dream and they've actually built a prison for themselves. Uh, it's not bringing in the income returns that they would like, not giving them the time that they would like, and it's certainly not giving them the lifestyle that they would like. So from my own experiences, and as I say, we've, we've been very, very blessed in our journey. 
uh, but I've made lots of mistakes along the way, and uh, I'm sure I can help so many people to uh, to avoid a lot of those pits, uh, you know, those uh, potholes. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, and say so it is a it is a full transformation. It has not been as easy as I had thought it would be. I thought it would be a very very simple process, and that's why Peter and I started a conversation. And Peter has already given me some incredibly valuable advice, keeping the ball in their court, uh, keeping that first conversation very, very personal. And uh, a conversation I had with a lady today, a beautiful lady today, potential client. And it was all really getting deep down, getting to know each other. So and I love doing that. It's, it's a very, very different than uh, the advice I've had from previous coaches which is get out there and hustle and it's sell, sell, sell. And, uh, you know, to the, to, to, you know it's, it, I just love the approach that Peter brings to the table and I'm ready to shut up, listen and learn. Thank you. <laughs> Can I ask you one thing, Andrew? You're a little bit sure. of one bit. <clears throat> yep. When you're dealing with business people, you said probably men, but that doesn't exclude women, correct? Yeah. But you didn't say what type of business. Are, are, are they small business? Are they solopreneurs? Are they corporate yeah. entities? Do you want to deal with the C-level group in corporations? Who are they? Sure, sure. Uh, it's been one of the hardest things for me to do, Peter, is to actually, uh, I, I, it's, it's very easy for me to tell everybody else that the money's in the niches, um, that, you know, if you've got a, if you've got a, you know, a brain injury, you don't go to the general practitioner, you want to go to the brain surgeon, but for, I've found it very difficult to take my own advice. When I get to that place and I'm confident enough to go into that place, that, that perfect avatar is likely to be working with their partner. Again, because that's the journey that I've taken. I've worked with my wife. It's not been an easy journey at time, but thank goodness, you know, love her to death. She's so patient with me. Um, but we have sought help outside to make sure, you know, to, to keep it together. Having that third person at the table, be it a business coach or, you know, some third entity to keep the conversation going. So I'm thinking the perfect avatar is most likely a husband and wife team. Um, employees, probably between two and five employees. Mm -hmm. uh, turnover, at least half a million uh, a year. That's Australian dollars, by the way. Uh, so perhaps, you know, three, 300. Uh, thousand uh, US dollars uh, at least. Um, yeah, probably a six. Um, if, it, if it's not a six figure income, it's pretty close to a six figure income, but not enough for them to step away from the business. The analogy I used to this morning when I was in a meeting was uh, how many times have you been down to the park and you've uh, you've seen somebody walking a dog and you've asked yourself the question, who's walking who? Is the dog walking the person or is the person walking the dog? And I see that so often in businesses. Is it the owner that's in business or is it the business that owns the owner? And um, I can take them through that journey to make sure they can free themselves from that business, either to sell it or to uh, sell it to themselves, have it, as a, as an, have it as an investment. Did I answer your question, Peter? Did I dig deep enough down into that, uh, that avatar? That's fine. That's fine. You went further than I expected. Okay. Thank you very much. But can, I, would I recommend to you, Andrew, that you reach out to everyone here on this call? Okay. okay? And talk with them because Thank they you. they're not all clients of mine, okay? But they are very good people and I think you might find some opportunities between each other to collaborate. That's what I'm getting at, all right? So have a think about that. It's be a brave step because I've never stepped outside of Australia for clients. Or for any advice, you know, you know, you know what I'm no, saying. I'm not sorry, not clients, but, but for, yeah. for support. My support network is very, very close to home. So thank well, you. Then, well, then it's about time you actually raise the flag, Andrew. I'm going to do that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Start with Pat Dreyer. He will put you in the right track. John Allen may be far behind. Yvonne, I mean, they're all there. Have a, that's what they're there for, to, to do that, all right? I and and that she that. knows that as well. So welcome again, and, and I hope you join us every week. And, and you can see this is not the most formal 
thing you're going to have. The whole idea of this is to feel safe, is to be able to express what you truly believe and what you feel about and seek help in the right way. That's what it's all about. And I don't have any commercial interest in anything that we speak about. That's not part of the deal for me. That's why it's easy for me to do it. All right. Jessica, lovely to see you again from last week. We got you back again this week, so we must have done something right last week. Great to see you. So how about we hear from you, and then Bonnie will come over to you, okay? So, Jessica, over to you. Hi, everyone. Thanks again, Peter. I'm glad I was able to make it this week. I just have to keep putting it in my head that it's at 7 a.m. Jessica, at 7 a.m. The time zone thing is still very, very crazy to me. But I think I'm getting it. Well, Peter, you have been so, so, so patient. It's, I think it has been more than a year you have been trying to help with this marketing thing. And I'm finally finding a way. There are two things that I'm most focused on. One is my financial coaching. Because as I'd explained to persons who were here last week, I find it very art rending that there are so many persons who are earning but they are not knowing where the money is going and therefore they are struggling mm -hmm. they're living from paycheck to paycheck and they're paying these exorbitant fees to the money lenders the micro finance sector and some persons i've seen persons with paychecks with ten dollars after they have paid all their loans so it's a continuous thing and it affects a lot of especially single mothers who have these children not getting any help from the fathers so what i'm trying to do putting in place is a business where i help persons to look at how they're managing their money the relationship they have with money because as a jamaican one of the things i think a lot of you would have known is that we heard the love of money is the root of all evil and if you love money and you shouldn't love money but i believe that you need to love money because if I don't have money, I can't live the life that God intended me to live and to help others to live the life that they're intended to live. So that is my main focus. It's a new business, something I'm pushing, trying to get persons to appreciate and develop a relationship with money so they can live the life they really were meant to live, which is financial freedom. I'm also an indexer proofreader and editor primarily and I also do research and writing because I'm also a trained librarian and records manager. So right now I'm just trying to find the best way to get clients and to get what I'm doing out there so that I can build and create financial wealth for myself while helping others. Thank you Jessica and, I, and for that Jessica and I we're not coaching clients we're just friends okay and and we've got two jamaicans on the call here yvonne jones and jessica right so jessica make sure you uh, do you know each other i think i've uh, somehow i know that i've met yvonne before i can't place where but now that we are here i'm sure we're going to start it out well then you better do that right yvonne party. write it down Abs absolutely actually that's what i messaged jessica about peter because i know i have met jessica somewhere i don't know what group because i was in jamaica for a while are you part of women's prosperity network jessica yes Okay, then I was okay. a chapter leader there, so we probably met that there. Might be. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. Because you're both lovely ladies, yeah. right? We sure will. Yes. Yeah, we are. Excellent. Thank you, Jessica. I hope you can do it on a regular basis. All right. Okay. Bonnie, Bonnie Hewitt, nice to see you. And thank you for the lovely comments over on LinkedIn. Over to you. Good morning. <clears throat> you're welcome. Um, Excuse my voice. I am um, kicking bronchitis's butt right now, uh, rather than fighting it. Uh, <laughs> are we still doing intros? I missed the beginning. I was yeah, doing yeah, kid duty. This yeah, way. I'm, okay. just, I'm not just putting the screen up. That's all. So you do this. Okay. I just wanted to make sure before I started rambling. Uh, I'm Bonnie Hewitt. I am in um, Pennsylvania, USA. Uh, I run an anxiety coaching business as well as work in um, the financial services business. And last year I brought the two of those together. I was invited into a company called Fortuity Financial Partners, 
It's located in San Diego, California, um, because I can I uh, have the ability to calm people and help them feel at ease uh, while they're talking about their finances. And anybody who's worked in the finance industry, finance space, coaching space, knows that um, finance is the number one thing that people have anxiety about. And so um, it's been a great matchup for me uh, and for the people that I help. And so really, I'm just looking for families. Um, we really focus, <clears throat> excuse me, heavily on financial literacy and financial education and getting the information into the hands of uh, people and families who normally wouldn't have access to that information. And so if you know anybody um, who could use some help, uh, you know, whether it's budgeting or getting out of debt uh, or setting up some protection and whatnot for their families or here in the States, let me know. Thank you. Actually, you know, Bonnie, financial pressure can be a horrible thing. I think we all experience that, okay? All of us. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it's people like you that help us get out of those holes, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I envy a person like you who has the skills to deal with that because I can help people make more money, okay? But I can't help them psychologically the way that you can. And that, to me, is a pretty special skill. So I'm, please make sure your link's in there. And for people watching this, reach out to Bonnie. If, you, if you are having a challenge right now, and, and it's very common, goodness gracious, it's a huge problem, financial tension and anxiety and pressure, reach out to people like Bonnie and anyone else here <clears throat> and don't try and do it on your own. It's, it's impossible to do it on your own. You can't do it. You can't do it. And this is a this is a, a family type group of entrepreneurs who who are here to help you to achieve what you need to achieve. But some of you may not even know what you are capable of doing yet. That's why I'm, I'm encouraging you to reach out and find out what your potential is with these people. Okay. So thank you, Jen, Bonnie. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. I hope I didn't speak too much there, but you do a great job and I, and I envy your skill. No, well, I, I appreciate it. And it's all come from firsthand experience. And anybody that knows me knows that I'm fully transparent about those experiences. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to sell somebody something I haven't, you know, Good. dealt with before. So. Good. Well, Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Yogish, nice to see you, my man. Why don't we start, we'll start with you, Yogish, in terms of the topic, is that okay with you? But before we do, I've just got a couple of apologies to put in. Tom Petty, Marie Nielsen, who was here with us last week, but she couldn't, she's running a coaching program today, so she can't do it, okay? Carol Davies, who's a, who's a regular attender, but she's having all sorts of troubles with a laptop, and I told her I really couldn't help her with that. Jeff Bills. He's as sick as a dog, okay, so he can't make it. Penny Kennedy wanted to try to make it if she possibly could, and she would have, I know her. If she could get here, come hell or high water, she'd have been here, but she couldn't do it. And someone who hasn't been with us for a while sent me a message, and she's going to join us soon, Martha Mock. Can you remember Martha? Okay, some of you may remember Martha. She's going to come back and join us soon. I also, Anthony Paselli. Santa Claus, right, who normally you can't miss when he's done these things because his volume is twice as loud as everybody else's, right? He can't make it this week either. So without any further ado, our topic is best business story you've heard. Okay? And put your hand up. Use the reactions bottom at the bottom and just to raise your hand. And whilst you're doing that, I just want to share with you one story that just to set the scene for you. Okay. This is a business story and it's showing my age and bear with me a moment on this, right? Because the year was 1955 before most of you were born. Okay. I was 10 years of age and I had two brothers. I was 10. My other the next brother down 
was eight and my youngest brother was four. And it happened to be my grandmother's birthday. We wanted to buy something for my grandmother for her birthday. My grandmother, we used to call lovingly Graham. She was Graham to everybody, right? And she was the one big lady. I mean, fat. We loved her, but my God, she had a waist that was incredible, right? And we wanted to buy something for a birthday. This is in a place called Tamworth, which is a city in New South Wales in Australia. So the three of us went down to this shop, okay? And the major shop in those days was called Trelaws. Doesn't matter much, but we walked into the shop and we said to the lady, we want to buy something for our grandma, for gram for, for, a, for a birthday, okay? But we've only got a certain amount of money, okay? What can we do? We can't afford to pay to buy a skirt or a dress or something, but we know exactly what size she has in underwear. <laughs> and they said, how do you know that? I said, because we slipped into her bedroom okay, one day and we know that when all three boys can, if we can fit down all three of us, <laughs> those pants are going to fit my gram. Right? <laughs> Little did we realize that whilst this conversation was taking place, somebody who had the smarts, you know, in terms of marketing, called the local newspaper. Okay, we didn't know because we're just kids, right? Next thing you know, this, this, this journalist came down with a photographer there. So the local newspaper was called the Northern Daily Leader. Okay, and they took this photo of these three boys standing inside his pair of huge pair of knickers, right? And they wrote a story about us, okay, buying this thing for our grandma, okay, <laughs> for Graham. Long story short, as a result of that, Graham gave us all a really good kick in the butt. That's the first thing. <laughs> Secondly, in 1955, she got a shopping voucher from the company for 100 pounds. This is before we had decimal currency, right? And 100 pounds would have been the equivalent of about three and a half thousand dollars today, right? She got that. Thirdly, the bit she didn't like was there's a big bridge crossing the river to come into the city, right? It's called the Peel River. And on this bridge, they had this huge sign for 12 months. And there's a photo of the us three boys getting into my getting into this pair of nick. Can you just imagine trying to all squeezing into these knickers with a photo of Graham superimposed behind us and the sign saying everybody shops at Trelaws, right? So that's oh. my story. Oh my goodness. And I can imagine how your grandmother felt, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> We were not on talking terms for a few days, I must admit. But, she, but you know what? She's Scottish heritage and she loved the money, but she never told us that. Because 100 pounds was a lot of money. A lot of money in those days, right? Anyway, that's my story of business, all right? Roy, over to you. Hello. Well, um, this one is, is very much a cautionary tale. I wonder who has heard who the Ratner effect. Gerald Ratner inherited his father's jewellery business in 1984, and within six years, he turned a small retailer into a multi-million dollar empire. People loved his store because it afforded, offered affordable products to the working class. It was generally known as the place where working class boys bought engagement rings and jewellery for working class girls. Life was going really well for Ratner. Expensive cars, houses, boats, women, and he frequented many high society events, even rubbed shoulders with uh, Margaret Thatcher at 10 Downing Street. Life was good until the fateful day when he was a guest speaker at the Institute of Directors in 1991 attended by 6,000 business people and journalists. For reasons only known to himself, 
Ratner decided to undo not only his entire life, but his empire in less than 10 seconds. <laughs> Asked how it was possible for his company to be selling a sherry decanter for just four ninety five, dollars he answered to the amazement of his audience and his shareholders the following. How can you sell this for such a low price? I tell you, because it's total crap. As you can guess, the media had a field day with this. The company's shares dropped 500 million pounds in a matter of days. Gerald Ratner lost his playboy lifestyle and job and the company had to do Phoenix and rename itself the Signet Group. So people say that any press is good press, but on this occasion, the negative media was not good press, and people still talk to this day, over in the UK anyway, about the Ratner effect. So wow. you know now what not to do. Wow, Joy. And he actually said publicly, we can still have yes. it yes. crap. Yes. Yes, apologies for the language, but that's what he said. Oh, no. Um, wow. Well, okay. Yeah, it was big, big news over here at the time, and we still remember it. So, it, so it's actually become part of folklore, the Ratner effect, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I remember that. Thank you. Okay. John, before we come to you, can I go to Yogi's first? I'm not sure how much time you've got, Yogi. So I'm going to, I'm going to pass it to you, then come back to John. So, Yogi, what about you? The best business story you've ever heard? Good, well, bad, or indifferent? <clears throat> well, I'm actually thinking about it. I'm not too sure, but um, it, I think everyone's heard this story. I'll just mention it. Uh, it was a father and son, and it was his son's first day in business. And the father told his son that, you know, uh, I, I want you to climb, climb on this wall, and I want you to jump. And he's like, um, are you sure you want me to do that? He's like, yeah. And he's like, but I'll fall. He's like, no, I'll catch you. And his son was hesitant, but yet he went up and he believed his father. And when he jumped, his father didn't catch him. And he fell and he said, you said you're going to catch me. And he told him, here's your first business lesson. Don't trust anyone. <laughs> so that, that was the one of the first business stories I ever heard. <laughs> and it, was, it, was it true? I, I'm not sure, but I heard it as a kid. So yeah, my, yeah, my dad to told me it as well. <laughs> yeah. how, I'm just trying to, how far did he, did he fall? That I don't know. I mean, we, we could really embellish this story. <laughs> <laughs> this crisis. All right. Thanks, Yogis. John, John Allen. I know you've got a stack of stories up your sleeve. So give me one. My great dad, my great hero, you know, I was working in a low income job. I, I will word it that way. And anyways, my dad said to me one day, he said, I pay more in income tax than you make. So that lit a fire under my butt. So I went, ended up going into construction and I've been working up in Northern Ontario. We're working seven tens. I come home, chest all puffed out and I said, I pay more in income tax than you make. And I'm strutting all around like King Tut. He looked at me and he said, good. Now quit using your hands and start using your head. Defleated the hell right out of my ego. <laughs> and with that, I ended up being smart and following his advice and going into management. But that was one of the biggest business stories I was ever given was I thought I was king shit of Turd Island, pardon my English, because of <laughs> all the money I was making. And then he blew the hell right out of that. And it was always a great lesson that I learned many years ago. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, John. And before I forget, Andrew and John, would you please connect with each other, talk to each other? Sure. Yvonne, <coughs> how are you? Okay, mine is pretty simple. Is one of my clients, my existing clients, uh, she and her husband started their 
air conditioning and HVAC business five years ago. And I am so proud of them because for the second year in a row, they were nominated, not nominated, they were awarded 20, uh, well, this year, 2022, best of the best AC companies on the Treasure Coast. This is a huge thing because they're huge wow. um, AC companies. They're on the Treasure Coast, which covers quite a wide area. And um, they come, basically, if you're thinking about competition, their competition would be people who are from large, uh, companies from large franchises <laughs> and so on and so forth. And their little company with her husband and herself, and I think there are two or three maximum service technicians have been voted best of the best two years in a row. I'm very proud of them. Wow. Fantastic. Great story. Thank you very much indeed, Yvonne. And by the way, is it called the Treasure Coast because of sunken ships with treasure? Yes, that's the this is the that's the tale I heard. I know, but that's what I heard because when I moved there in uh, two thousand and five, two thousand and six, but when we bought property there, we heard Treasure Coast, and I inquired. There's something about the Spanish. Um, there's a whole Spanish fleet right. that apparently. Um, they made some disaster. I can't remember if it was a hurricane or what have you. And supposedly they lost a lot of treasure there. Treasure there. And some of it was recovered many, many years later. But the entire the entire area is called the Treasure Coast. We have a lot of coasts in Florida. There's a space coast where the spaceships launch from. There's a treasure coast and so forth. Thanks. Thank you, Yvonne. You're welcome. Brenda, over to you. Well. As I was sitting here, I, I experienced a bit of hesitancy around so sharing this story because I'm not sure the person I'm sharing it about will be abundantly happy. I might end up like you, Peter, with your grandmother, but I'm going to share the story anyway because I think it's an important message. I have an amazing niece who is in her 20s, and she has taught me more about persistence and more about never giving up than anybody I know. She, she's an identical twin and they, her and her sister both went into the same field and they went to school and they got their education. And as a final credentialing for their career, their chosen career path, they had to write an exam, a big exam. And if they, if they didn't pass the exam, they wouldn't be able to work in their field. And my exam, my niece wrote her exam and the first time she wrote it, she failed. And she said, that's okay, I'm gonna do it again. And she went back and she wrote her exam the second time. And there's a rule with the, the company that, that runs these exams. If you fail twice, you have to go back and take the whole course from beginning to end all over again. And so my niece wrote her exam the second time through no fault of her own. She was unable to pass the exam again. And we were, we were so concerned for her because this was her, her dream. This was her, like her total passion. All she'd ever talked about was working in this field. And, um, we said, we said, it's okay, go, go back, take the course again, just, just start again, you can do this. And she said, at a certain point, you have to know when it's, it's not wise to put any more money into something. And she made the decision to rework her life and find a new career. She went to work at a big hotel chain in St. Thomas and she was doing very well and she worked her way up. She was recognized and she was doing great. And during COVID, they closed down. And once again, my niece had the rug pulled right out from under her. And, and I don't know what I would have done at that point, especially not if I was in my 20s like she was. Mm. But my niece <clears throat> found a whole bunch of part-time jobs. She started tutoring a little boy. She went to work in a yoga studio and learned yoga. And she's just 
stuck with it, persisted, and she's now doing very well in one of the pharmacies in St. Thomas. John, maybe someday you'll get to meet my niece if you go into the pharmacy. I'm, I don't, I'm afraid I don't know the name of it, but she's doing very well. And, and she's, but if she had given up, if she had just said, nope, which a lot of people do let life beat them down like that. She never gave up. She just kept going. And every time I think about giving up, I think about my niece and I think about, and then I think about Dory from the cartoons and I think just keep swimming just like she did. Good on you, Brenda. <coughs> Always love listening to your stories. Thank you so very much. Okay. Pat, Pat Dreyer, what about you, my man? Well, back in the 70s, or actually when I was growing up, my dad ran a, a uh, ice house and a cold storage warehouse. And one time he got approached by this guy to be a partner in a, a new business, so a new ice house that he was going to buy. And he wanted my dad to be his 50-50 his partner. Mm -hmm. And he said that, you know, he, he, we would... Uh, we would run it together. I'd own it. You would you would run it for us. And after about five years, I would actually just turn this over to you. And so we were thinking about this. And the guy drives up to the house and he's making the presentation to my dad. And they spend a lot a lot of time over the months talking about how they're going to set it up and do things. He drives up in this beautiful red convertible Mercedes. I say I have to go to the store. He throws me the keys. I get to drive the car. And, and so it, I'm thinking, this is going to be a great relationship with this guy, you know? And so after about oh, three months or so, my dad's working with his attorney. And his attorney says, you can't do the deal. And he says, why not? He says, it's an ice house. One day, this guy is going to ask you to not come in over the weekend while he's literally putting the guy on ice. He says, this is the mafia. You can't accept this. Oh <laughs> so, right. so all of that hope and wonderful things we were thinking for. He says, "You just." He says, <laughs> "Bill, if you want to do it, you can." He says, "But the guy will own you after that." And so, uh, obviously, we didn't do the deal, but it uh, it sure sounded sounded like something we wanted to get into for a while. <laughs> Puts a whole new connotation on Ice House, doesn't it? <laughs> like the guy on Ice, yeah. What do you mean, well, I don't know if you've seen how ice is made, but these these big blocks of ice they're they're in three hundred pound uh, metal containers, and they're all oh, a good three four feet high, hmm. and then they just cut them up into fifty pound blocks or crush them up into ice. But uh, you could literally put a person in them, fill them with water, and dunk them in the tank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So that's that's how close I got to, to working with the mafia. Yeah, my goodness, this much. <laughs> Andrew. Pretty close. I was ready to go, man. Once he threw me the keys, I was in. <laughs> <laughs> You're behind the Mercedes and you were fine, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Andrew? Wow. A story you heard. A business story of any sort. Was that me you said, Peter? Yes, Andrew. Okay. This is tough because there's been some very, very good stories there. Here. What on earth can I bring to it? Um, we've got a bit of a horror story, our own journey with a bit of a horror story, bad advice and the accountant told us to, it's probably a little bit too early to be going into details about that with people I don't know. So uh, <laughs> I'm thinking the best story I can probably give is that hasn't happened yet because now I've met you, Peter. I, uh, my transformation is going to be the best story uh, ever told. But um, the gentleman that spoke about the uh, jumping off the wall and, and not being caught reminded me of a story which many people may have already heard. Is the, um, the gentleman that had a hot dog stand and worked every hour that was, that was sent to him to, uh, to produce the best hot dogs in the land and people used to travel long, long distances and he'd sell them on the street corner and, uh, you know, the finest meat and the, uh, the beautiful homemade sauces he made and all the rest of it. And uh, he had a fantastic living, so good that he was able to pay for his son to, uh, to go through college. And his son came back from college one day and uh, he went out with his father, you know, selling the, uh, these hot dogs. 
And uh, he turned around and said, Dad, what are you doing? Have you not heard there's a recession coming? Look how much meat you're putting into those burgers. And he said, the finest quality. You carry on doing that and you're going to go bankrupt. And the sauces, he said, you know, don't put so much tomatoes in the sauces. Try and find some ways to cut back because uh, there's hard times ahead. So his father, trusting his son, took the advice. And uh, within 12 months, he'd gone bankrupt. And his father was uh, later, you know, overheard talking to his mates. He turned around and said, you know what? He said, I've worked all these years to send my son to college. And he said, and it was worth every cent. He knew this recession was coming. Mm. Mm. Wow. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. That's a darn good story. <laughs> and, and man, a lot of wisdom there. And, I, and we've lost some people because they've got meetings to go to. And I know I've, I've held you long enough. Oh, I think we just lost Jessica. I was about to ask her to do something. All right. Well, look, because in the interest of time, I just want to say to the five of you who are left with me now, thank you very much for your contribution today. Please, please make sure you reach out to each other. Okay. And I look forward to you joining me again. Same time, same link, different topic next Wednesday. All right. Many Bye, blessings everybody. Thank you, Peter. Bye, everyone. Many blessings to you all. Okay. Great seeing everybody. Okay, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Yeah, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Welcome again, Andrew.